to really enjoy our victory, uh, given the the crash of out. It, it was a bit, I guess, yeah, mixed emotions for sure. Uh, not just me, but you could feel in the whole team there was kind of a, yeah, uh, yeah, just a, a duality there that we lost our biggest leader and also the yeah the biggest star of the team maybe and. At the same time, we, we also won the race and we did a really good job. So, yeah, I felt supported by the team for sure. Uh, they were really congratulatory and we, yeah, we still celebrated the victory. And, um, I mean, we have to. It was, we put a lot of work into this, so we still had to, uh, yeah, really enjoy the victory. But at the same time, um, yeah, we, we also felt, yeah, emotional for a while. Matteo Jorgensen, welcome to the Classics Big Time. A sensational victory from Matteo Jorgensen. Matteo, given the bombshell day there, all of Belgium losing its superstar ahead of the Tour of Flanders, how satisfying was it for you and then for the team to pull off the victory and fly the flag for Visma? It felt really good, I have to say. Personally, to, to win in those circumstances for me felt even, um, yeah, even better than if we had just had a, yeah, um, if we had just done our plan regularly and, and won uh, without without the bad luck and the setback. So, yeah, for me, it, it felt uh, even more satisfying. And I was really happy that we could actually pull it off and, and yeah, give some positivity in, in that day because, uh, yeah, it was uh, the crash was really not nice. You were ninth on debut at Flanders last year. How much have you developed as a rider since then, especially since joining Visma? A lot, for sure. I think... Um, Already, I don't think, yeah, I was a bad rider last year. I mean, ninth at Flanders, I'm also very proud of that result. Um, but yeah, I've come definitely a long way in, in a lot of different regards since then. Um, and yeah, one of them being just my my knowledge of the area around here. And yeah, my I guess uh, I've, I've really learned just through this team, like we were here in November doing recons already of for Flanders and, and Roubaix and... I've tried, yeah, quite hard to learn all the names of the climbs, despite uh, that being a very complicated task. But um, I feel like, yeah, I know kind of my way around and and how um, how the races kind of play out. So, yeah, I think um, I've I've come a long way. On Sunday, you're gonna be the underdog with the team, probably. There are two options, I guess. Try to follow and get to get to the final or try to anticipate and make it a hard race what do you prefer yeah i would prefer a hard race that's for sure um just personally speaking um yeah i i, I usually do better when yeah the races are are a harder harder effort from start to finish but yeah we'll, we'll just have to wait and see what it's like do you consider yourself as one of the favorites to win flanders on sunday yeah i think uh i i'm yeah, I think there's one clear favorite, and that's uh, Matthew Vanderpool. And and yeah, I think I'm still in what I consider the best team in the world. So I think uh, you can never really count us out. But yeah, I think as a rider, uh, Matthew Vanderpool is is uh, definitely a, a notch above. Uh, yeah, just in theoretical terms. But uh, it's it's a, it's a bike race, and like we've seen in the past races, uh, uh, yeah, a lot of things can happen, and so. I think, um, yeah, I, I, we, we still have a good chance and I have a lot of confidence in this team, that's for sure. You know, Mateo, you spent all this time with uh, Wout in training camps, now in the races as well, and Tish was saying more time than you guys have spent with your partners. What have you picked up from him? Little nuggets along the way and also in the races, the way he rides that perhaps you can use. Yeah, uh, it was a pleasure riding the final with, uh, with Tish on, on Wednesday, like... Uh, I couldn't have had a better a better guy yeah basically coaching me through the the final there yeah there was a moment where well there there were plenty of things we were communicating basically the whole time uh, after the Canaryberg him and I and yeah every couple of minutes we were exchanging words and yeah he was telling me uh, little tidbits like yeah 900 meters there's a left and then I'll be crosswind we'll hit Pave I mean it, just things that I um, would never have known and I really have to say like I'm just super grateful to have him there and he's a super really good teammate and yeah we've become a lot closer uh, just in the past few weeks being here so yeah I think uh, yeah on Sunday it'll be important that he's there as well and we can work together.
I was referring to Van Art. That was interesting what you said about uh, the team. If you could explain a little bit about Wild, and then also what have you seen from now riding in the super team and then there bumping shoulders with Vanderpool? What have you seen from him as well as your number one rival for Sunday? Yeah, for for Wild, um, yeah, I have, yeah, I mean, I've spent years looking up to him, uh, yeah, from from the outside. Uh, and he's, yeah, been winning a lot of races that I've, taken part in so uh there's that but then this year being his teammate has been really nice uh he's yeah welcomed me in immediately already like i said when we did the recons in november it was like my first uh my first kind of point of contact with the team and yeah i was still in movie kit at the time and yeah he, he still treated me like uh, one of the guys and since then it's been really good um so yeah he, he's a really good teammate to have and and yeah to answer your question about vanderpool um yeah, he's super impressive. Uh, there's a uh, not much you can do when when he when he lights it up and goes on the attack. So, yeah, he's just a really um, impressive rider. Mateo, the victory in Perry Nice overall, winning one Wednesday at Dwarf Dwarf Landrin. What does that mean for you going into the Tour of Flanders? It means a lot. I have to remain realistic and and yeah, I'll just have to do my best on Sunday. I don't think uh, yeah. Nothing magical is going to happen, but I think my legs this year are something completely new, and I'm still finding my limits. Actually, I don't. Yeah, I haven't really found. Uh, yeah, where where I blow up yet. So, I think. Um, yeah, my feeling after Wednesday is. Yeah, a new new level of confidence in these races, and also just having. Yeah, like I said earlier, learned uh, the the parkour and and the roads, and yeah, I really put a lot of effort into that this year, and I think. Um, yeah, I really have a idea in my head of, of what's coming up next and where we are in the race, so that really that helps me a lot. Do you view the situation vastly different without Van Art riding on Sunday? And, and if so, how do things change for you and the team? If you saw the amount of man hours that they put into uh, making the original plan, I think you would understand that uh, they still haven't finished uh, Yeah, the, the new plan with the riders that we have now, so I, I still don't even know the, the final plan. But um, yeah, I think we, uh, we basically will have to kind of yeah, play off of Alpecin because I think they have yeah, full, full pressure on them to, to take the race into their hands, and then we'll just have to look for our, our moment. And he knows he's done it. What a season it's been so far. The trendsetter of the season. He's done it in a stage race. He's now a cobbled semi-classic winner. Matteo Jorgensen, welcome to the classics big time. A sensational victory from Matteo Jorgensen.